Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm doing a video today that I wasn't sure whether I should film or not. It's taken me a long time to actually get around to filming it. And I know I was getting a lot of requests to do it, but um, I just didn't know if anybody actually really, really wanted my opinion. So as some of you may or may not know, I studied nutrition in university or college in Ireland as we call it. I studied it for four years and I got a degree in it in 2012. I've done a number of talks on it. I have done a number of consultations in nutrition. And some of the girls and guys here were actually requesting me to do this video and to give advice on how to lose weight and kind of healthy eating tip. I just I was really just unsure whether to do this or not because it is such a personal video for me to make. I don't generally make a lot of these kind of videos. I just wasn't sure if you even wanted to hear what I had to say or you even cared. I know this is a beauty channel and that's what I kind of wanted to stick to but if I got like a lot of requests to do this. So it's not as if I just you know came up with this video on my own. I was trying to maybe not do it. <laughs> I know that sounds really bad but I just I don't want to get hate on a video like I know it's unavoidable at sometimes but I don't want to get hate from people saying oh that's not what you do and this is why you do it this is what I did this is what I studied in and I qualified in it this is just what I've learned and not only did I learn it from textbook I've learned it like from actually been out there doing consultations and doing one-on-ones with people so a question I get asked continuously is how do you lose weight and what diet should I be on and I'm eating this and I'm not eating this and like I just that just kind of infuriates me to begin with because people are going on these diets I hate that word for starters healthy eating is what I call it or a balanced meal a diet is just a fad thing that you know people do and they continue for a couple of weeks and then they fall off the wagon and they're back to their normal eating regime which was possibly unhealthy before. What I like to call it is like I was saying a healthy eating plan so when people say what should I be eating to lose weight and I say a balanced diet and they're kind of like yeah well you know like duh but like what sort of diet should I be on? I'm like a healthy balanced diet. There's no secrets and hidden agendas and there's no kind of things that people are keeping to themselves and it's a great way to lose weight. There is nothing on the planet that will make you lose like half a stone in a week. There's nothing. You can't do that healthily. It's just not healthy to do that. It's not healthy to starve yourself and it's also not healthy to skip meals. So I'm going to talk about all that in this video and if you're not interested in it then you know skip over and I just want to address something first. Yes I have lost weight but it is not intentional. I lost about half a stone. I was eight and a half stone. I'm now eight stone. I was dancing for 12 whole weeks doing Strictly Come Dancing. I'm now in a production all Oliver. So I'm going to be on stage performing Oliver um, and I also do exercise classes twice a week. It's not a purposeful thing, I'm just exercising more. So I will address that later on in the video and I will talk about, you know, exercise. And a lot of people are asking, can they see my bikini body? I don't know if I'm going to do that. I don't know if anybody wants to see that. I'm very nervous about doing something like that, so we'll see. So first of all, the main question I get, again, like I was saying, how do I lose weight and I'm cutting this out and cutting that out and I don't want to eat that. So I'm going to keep this kind of, like I'm sure lots of you know this, so I'm going to keep it kind of really basic and I'll answer any additional questions in the comments that anybody has. Your main food groups would be your carbohydrates, your fats and your proteins. Your carbohydrates are your things like your breads, your pastas, your rices, lots of other things. Potatoes fall into that category as well. Carbohydrate products basically release sugars into your bloodstream and they give you energy. If you are eating the wrong types of carbohydrates, I mean carbohydrates like white bread, anything white, anything like that, like white flour of any kind will release sugars quite quickly into your bloodstream meaning that you're not staying full for a long period of time at all and then you start to eat more frequently during the day. So the next food group would be your proteins. Now your proteins are your meats, your fish, your eggs, nuts, different things like that. Proteins are mainly providing the build up of your, your structure of your cells. That's what protein does. And then you've got your fats. You have your good fats and your bad fats. So your good fats would be things like your omega fats, 
they come from things like fish and flaxseed and then you've got your bad fats which are your saturated fats um, they come from processed food and butter and different things like that so they would be your three three main food groups your carbohydrates your proteins and your fats and your carbohydrates are for energy if I didn't mention that so what you need to be doing is basically you need to be eating from each kind of category. You've got your vitamins and minerals as then as well, which I will discuss later. In Ireland, our food pyramid is what we kind of go on. It's a pyramid shaped structure like that naturally. And it has different shelves. I think you follow it in different countries as well. Your first shelf is your carbohydrate products. Your next shelf would be your vegetables and your fruits. I don't agree with that and I would swap them around. Well, when I was finished in college, we were recommending six portions of fruit and vegetable a day. I'm actually doing a course at the moment. I'm continuously doing courses since I left college because it's just, it's important to kind of keep up to date. But the most recent thing that I've learned is you need to be eating seven or more portions of fruit and vegetable a day. So a portion of a fruit, just to give you an example, a plum would be half a portion, a mandarin or a small orange would be half a portion, kiwi, half a portion, eight, eight grapes, half a portion. So that is half a portion, and then a portion would be your bananas, a big orange, big apple, anything like that, a pear would be also, so they're your portion. So in college I was learning one to two portions of fruit, now it's two to three portions of fruit, so that's what you need to be eating every day, every single day. You know, there's no day that you can leave out. And you need to be eating four plus portions of vegetables. So your vegetables are your carrots, your broccoli, your turnip, all those kind of things are your vegetables and they are what you need to bulk up your whole day with. They're what you need to snack on. If you want to be healthy, you need to eat lots and lots of fruit and vegetables because they're so important to you. They give you all your minerals and your vitamins. They will keep your hair looking healthy. So it keeps your skin looking healthy. It keeps your body trim. It is your fuel. Like that is what fuels everything inside you, vitamin and mineral wise. They are what contributes to how you will look. If you look crap and you feel crap, it's because you're not eating properly. You're not eating your fruits and vegetables. They're what gives you your minerals and your vitamins and you need them every day in seven plus proportions. So you need tons of them. Don't overcook vegetables because they're just not gonna be appealing. Try and make them al dente as I described. So you cook them where they're crispy and they're just a little bit more appetizing. You can eat them raw where possible. Sometimes they can be a bit hard on the stomach. So, you know, cook them wherever you can. And with your veg, with your fruit, um, eat them raw and try and eat them wherever you can eat the skins on them. Obviously you're not gonna eat the skin in of a banana or an orange, but like, you know, like eat the skins of apples and things like that. The next shelf is the carbohydrate shelf, which I described earlier, your, your breads and your pastas and your rice best portions to get of these are whole meal or whole grain and you need to get five plus portions of your carbohydrates a day so I would recommend that you do two to three portions of whole meal so brown products brown rice brown bread whatever way you want to eat it don't eat too much you don't need too too much fiber I would always start off in the morning with some porridge porridge oats are one of the best things that you can start with they release serotonin into your body for starters which means that your body or you feel a little bit happier serotonin is also great for relieving stress and it's brilliant for helping with sleep as well. So, you know, if you're you're feeling happier, you're less stressed, then you sleep better. And if you sleep better, you eat better. Every morning, eat porridge. Even if you don't like it, try and get used to the taste of it. There's nothing as wholesome, there's nothing as good as porridge in the morning. Um, if you're not sure what porridge is, it's oatmeal. Porridge releases sugar slowly into your bloodstream, which means that you don't get an instant peak and an instant dip in your blood sugars, meaning you're hungry. It releases them over a longer period of time, keeping you fuller for longer, meaning that you eat less um, crap food because when you're starving or your blood sugars go really low, you tend to go for something really, really high in sugar, a snack food, chocolate bar, whatever it is, just to increase your sugars. Uh, if you let your sugars go too low, too often, you could be susceptible to diabetes later in life and that is why I say never skip meals ever. If you skip meals, it means that your blood sugar levels are going down and down and down. Even if you had something like porridge for breakfast and you skip your lunch and you're not eating till dinner time, you've gone what, maybe six, seven hours without eating and your blood sugars are gonna plummet. Um, then you eat something kind of sugary maybe to peak them up again. You're turning on and off your insulin, which is what reduces the sugar in your bloodstreams. I know this sounds really complicated guys but it's really not. Basically 
Eat foods that release sugar over a longer period of time. Whole meal foods will do that. Porridge is a great one as well. Some um, fruits and things like that release sugars over a longer period of time. Basically, you need carbohydrates to do that. Don't skip meals because then you will be making your sugars you know, be high at one minute, be low at the next, high, low, high, low. You need to release insulin from your pancreas to um, uh, level out your sugars in your bloodstream, using them for energy and whatever. If you keep turning on and off your insulin, what happens if you keep flicking a light switch? It'll eventually blow. You will eventually wear down your pancreas and eventually you may become susceptible to diabetes. So your next section or your next shelf is your dairy shelf. So these will contain things like... Um, cheese and um, your milk and different things like that. that. That shelf is the shelf that you need to be kind of, if you want to try and lose weight, reduce your amount of cheese. That's the only thing I would recommend. R on a daily basis you should only be eating a matchbox size of cheese. So that's the only amount of cheese you can have. Cheese is so high in fat and that's why it's not recommended in a huge quantity. If you're trying to lose weight again, you can have low fat milk or skimmed milk, that's perfectly fine. But just make sure that you're getting enough calcium in. So this, that's the shelf that you would get your calcium from. So from your yogurts and different things like that. If you are trying to lose weight, like I said, up for the diet version or the low fat version of it or skimmed or whatever it may be and just maybe not eat cheese as regularly or a matchbox size if you are having a slice of cheese. The next shelf would be your fish and your poultry and all that so that is the shelf that you need to get two portions from a day. So if you're eating anything from this shelf make sure that you're getting lean pieces of meat so lean chicken, lean turkey, these all have very little fat on them and they'll help with if you are trying to lose weight. You need to have red meat in your diet, but if you don't like red meat, make sure you eat lots of green veg, like spinach and broccoli, because you're gonna miss out on your iron if you're not eating red meat. That's where you get your iron from, it gives you energy. So if you're not eating red meat, you don't like red meat, that's perfectly fine. Red meat is fine to eat once a week, that's perfectly okay. But if you're not eating it, you need to replace it with green veg. If you are a vegetarian, you don't like anything like meat-wise, then I would recommend to do um, meat substitutes, so um, texture vegetable protein or corn or different things like that, just to make sure that you're getting some sort of meat substitute in. Make sure, like I said, to opt for the lean versions of meat, so your chicken and your turkey and your fish. Make sure you get two portions of fish in a week, one of them to be oily. So the oily fish would be your salmon, salmon, your salmon, your mackerel, herring, tuna, things like that. They will contain omega-3 fatty acids, flax seeds also contain them and they're the good fats that you need in your body. They help with reducing inflammation and they have very protective properties in the body. So I would recommend getting your oily fish. Your top row or the last portion is your use sparingly portion of the food pyramid. These contain sweets, anything with salt or sugar in it, anything refined or anything processed. So these are the things that you need to limit in your day and that's where a healthy diet comes in. So people are saying to me, what diet do I need to so I'll be on the, whatever, the paleo diet, all these different kind of diets. None of these diets really work because you tend to eat them for a little while and then when you come off the diet, you go like, oh no, I'm never going on another diet again. I'm just going to eat all around me now because that's the way that, you know, I'm, I've always eaten. If you make small changes every day in your diet, I'm telling you, you will see differences. So if you... You know, if you're eating a lot of red meat and you're eating a lot of refined foods, so processed foods or anything with fat and salt in it, you need to reduce your amount of them. So I take everything day by day. So if you're if you have a bad diet and you want to change, don't do it all in one day because you'll become really disheartened and you'll just not do anything. If you're wanting to change your diet, I recommend to do one thing at a time. So if you're eating a lot of sugary foods, perhaps you're drinking a lot of, you know, um, soda drinks or fizzy drinks or whatever I would eliminate them first of all from your diet that's the first thing that I would recommend to go too much sugar or too much fizzy drinks get rid of them you don't need them do that for a week or so and continue to eat the way you've always been eating then the following week 
you know, keep your fizzy drinks or your sugar or whatever you've eliminated that week. Keep that out and then maybe reduce, you know, table salt that you're adding onto your dinner and maybe do that for a little while. Reduce the sugar that you have in your tea. Reduce, you know, do it step by step. Don't do it all in one week because you'll just become disheartened. You won't see results and then you'll just have another binge and it's just, it. you'll, you'll just become, I believe me, I know, I've seen people that I've done consultations with. I've done it myself. I've done things where I'm like, oh, I'll be on this diet and that diet. Before I had any knowledge of being a nutritionist or anything like that, I would have done this in school when I was about 17. I would think this was great to starve myself or to remove different elements of food from my diet that were actually helping me to become, um, like helping me to be strong, have healthy hair, to be, um, all around healthiness basically. I was eliminating these from my diet and starving myself or only eating Harry Bowl sweets or only eating something with very little amount of actual nutrients in them. Because they were low on fat or had no fat at all, I thought this was great to just do that. It's not great. So I hope I made myself clear on a couple of those topics. Like I said, I'll go into detail. I'll link a food pyramid down below. Um, I will ask answer any questions if I wasn't clear I'm really sorry guys but please ask me lots of questions the next thing I want to talk to you about is water you need to really hydrate your body it's so important to keep hydrated there's nothing that can compare to water it's what keeps us running it keeps our electrolytes in our body balanced it keeps everything just you know we're made from water our whole bodies basically contain water so that is what I would recommend for you to do none of these fizzy drinks or energy drinks or anything like that they're just absolutely detrimental to you if you're taking an energy drink in you're getting side effects from the caffeine for starters you can get things like um, shakiness you can get agitation basically make your body com go completely out of sync. So caffeine is an anti-nutrient. Caffeine's in coffee, tea and those energy drinks as well that you think are giving you a boost of energy, they're not. What an anti-nutrient actually does is it stops nutrients from being absorbed. Caffeine's not needed in your body. It's not something that you need to intake. Eat a carbohydrate meal, like eat a bowl of porridge. It will be much more beneficial for your energy in the morning than a cup of coffee. If you want to have something hot, you miss your cup of tea. Herbal teas and chamomile teas are great. Maybe a couple of times a week I would have a regular cup of tea, you know, a, a breakfast tea. Um, other than that, I would like my herbal teas and my chamomile teas are just fine. So a lot of people ask me as well, another common question is, do I need a supplement? Um, I'm low in iron or I'm low in this, I'm low in that. Um, do I need to take a supplement? You may need to take a supplement for something like boosting your energy like your iron or if you're not getting enough B vitamins. The B vitamins, if you're eating healthily, you should be getting them from all your different food groups. I mean, they're present in pretty much all food. Um, your B vitamins are so important. They're uh, available in dairy foods, they're available in your meats, they're available in lots of different things. So B vitamins are quite important for your nervous system. If you're not getting enough um, B vitamins and iron, maybe you're just not eating right, I would recommend something like a tonic just for a short period of time. That'd be about the max of supplements that I would ever recommend. Uh, if you're not getting things like calcium and stuff, you know, you need to improve your calcium intake by drinking more milk or eating more yogurt. So supplements are not always necessary and they're kind of like a quick fix that so people think, oh, I'm not, you know, I'm not eating this and I'm not eating that and I'm not gonna eat that, so I'm gonna take a supplement instead. Some supplements would be great, but I just don't think everybody needs them if they're eating a balanced diet. Next question I get asked a lot as well is, <laughs> Should I be taking diet tablets? No way! Diet tablets are ridiculous. Lots of women would find a diet tablet maybe as a quick fix or possibly they might just think that it's helping them in some way. I'm not really sure what the whole kind of thing with these diet tablets. They were a little bit of a fad there about two years ago. I don't see them around as often but Diet tablets, what they basically do is they describe as um, fat binders. So basically when you eat something that's fatty, uh, it will bind to the fat in it and stop it from being absorbed and just get it removed from the body. But what it actually does is it makes your body lazy. It makes your body stop like breaking down fat and it actually stores them then when you go back on to your regular you know, meal plan because I don't think anybody's going to be able to keep up with the cost of them for starters and you know, you kind of just lose interest in taking something like a diet 
diet pill so any weight you did lose during the process of taking a diet pill it will go all back on so I would recommend not to do that the next question I get asked is how many meals should I be eating a day I always say to people to be eating six now, I know that sounds like a lot, but you eat little and often. You keep your body's metabolism going constantly, which means that it will break down your food and use your food for energy much better. So I say six meals. I'm not meaning like six big dinners. What I would recommend would be a breakfast, a lunch and a dinner and then three snacks. These snacks can be anything from like Ravita crackers with little toppings on them or it can be like a banana with some yogurt cut onto like brown bread or something. Things like that. Small little snacks that you would eat throughout the day but it just means that your metabolism is going constantly. When you skip your meals, your metabolism becomes lazy or sluggish, which means it's not breaking down food as quickly and using them, which means that you store your fat much easier. So I think I kind of covered everything. So I just wanna talk about my own experience because I think people are interested in that, or maybe they're not. If, you don't, if you're not interested in this, maybe just, you know, end the video or whatever. People ask me like, how do I say thin or how do I say kind of keep my normal body shape 80% of what you eat is what your body type will be 20% is the exercise or the workouts that you would put in so 80% of what you eat is what size you'll be so you literally are what you eat if you eat fatty foods you will be slightly overweight if you eat healthily and balanced you will keep a normal balanced weight it's basically just as simple as that and 20% of that is exercise so the body type that I have right now is from basically 80% what I eat 20% the exercise I do so I would be quite petite I'm between 5 foot 4 and 5 foot 5 I'm somewhere in the middle there um, I, I have like an average kind of size body for my my height so I never wanted to lose weight I wanted to improve my fitness because I was finding I was really tired when I was dancing I find that I'd come home in the evenings I'd absolutely pan out the next day at work I was wrecked so I wanted to include a healthier balanced diet into my regime of doing the dancing so that I wasn't become lethargic or that I didn't injure myself either so I just started eating more healthily and I was improving like my intake of like fruits and vegetables which I would have kind of eaten but not in a, as much as I did when I was doing the exercise. I just don't want this video to be me promoting losing weight. I'm just giving my tips on how to successfully shed a few pounds and what happened to me while I was dancing. Um, I just naturally became, wanted to become healthier and I did end up losing a bit of weight and perhaps this is the size that I'm supposed to be and before when I was eating like slightly unhealthy maybe I was a little bit overweight for my body type I'm not sure for me right now you know I'm fine I'm content I just miss my boobs because they have gone to nothing so if you are worried about your weight uh, I would recommend to start today eating healthy you know if you've already eaten bad for the first half of the day perhaps continue eating healthy you know um, start taking water in more frequently, start maybe exercising, maybe go for a walk, maybe uh, exclude them, you know, chocolates that you love so much or maybe not eat so many crisps or whatever it may be. Lots of different things you can do in a day to kind of just help you kickstart you. So with me, it was just the dancing that kind of took over. I was doing so much dancing and exercising and, you know, I was eating much healthier and I didn't have time to actually even order like something like a pizza. I was grabbing like bananas on the go and I was eating like apples and things like that. So it was kind of just a, a choice that I made that was unconscious even to myself. I was just actually going for the healthier options because I actually felt healthy for the first time in a long time. I was feeling much healthier. I had lots of energy. So um, like I said, lots of people had requested me to do this. And um, I didn't want to, <laughs> but uh, look, for the purpose of the video, I'm going to do this. And if you're uncomfortable with anything like women showing flesh or being in a bikini or if you just don't like pe seeing people's bodies, maybe just skip to the end of the video. I 
I will link down also or right in the description bar a sample day like a, a balanced diet like one that I would recommend to a client and again if there was any more questions that you had that I didn't answer please do ask and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and that it wasn't too long and if I do end up putting in the bikini shot please don't be cruel to me uh, it took a lot for me to actually do this and like I said it, I wouldn't be doing it only for I was asked to do it um, it's not something I kind of really like. I'd be very embarrassed about things like that. So just be mindful of my feelings and the things you say. So I think that's basically it. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please thumbs it up and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll talk to you again then. Bye.